The idea that comparison is the thief of joy really is one that needs to be emphasized, especially in the modern world. For younger kids, oftentimes they see posts on various social media platforms, uh, myself included, and it just seems like, oh, I wish I had that life. You feel envious of that, when really it brings you to neglect things you have. Oftentimes, it's a role reversal. It goes both ways. Those people wish they had something you did. And because of that, you take things for given, things for granted. Uh, maybe you have parents that you haven't really been grateful to recently when they're supporting you. Maybe you don't have that, but you have a lot of material goods. Either way, it may feel like if only I had that thing that that other person has, then I'd be able to succeed. But what it really does mean is that you can be grateful for what you do have. Gratitude is something that can't not be undervalued or underappreciated. Expressing it is a whole different thing though. You may feel grateful towards uh, someone for waving at you, it brightened up your day. But did you ever think to return the favor to some stranger uh, passing by? And did you ever just wave at them out of the side of your car while you're walking around? Did you ever stop to think about what it really meant for you? Sometimes you do need that little help. You do need that little extra step, but you can't rely on it. And the best way to encourage things like that around you and in your social circle and atmosphere is to do things that you would wish would happen to you yourself. I'll give you an example if, for example, you go to work every day and there's somebody who you appreciate that will say, bring in uh, coffee for everyone, bring in donuts for everyone every Sunday, for example. Just uh, something out of the kindness of their heart. I'm sure that they aren't doing it explicitly because they just love giving people donuts. That's not the actual reason. They love it because of the joy it brings them to give something to somebody else. That joy of giving isn't something that requires an exact payment back. It's not something that's like, oh, okay, I'm gonna give this to somebody and then I'm going to feel gratitude. I'm going to receive money, for example. That's often confused with reasonings as to why we do something. Doing something out of the kindness of your heart versus doing something with an expected outcome are major, majorly different things. Oftentimes, if you do something with an expected outcome, you're going to feel worse about either A, receiving the reward, or B, not receiving it, because you feel that that action was jaded. For example, I'll give you a real life example. It took me a while to figure this out. When I, when I was playing hockey this past year, uh, and I wasn't dressing. I would pack a stick bag for everyone. I would ask if they needed anything, and I tried to be the best team I could. I originally started doing it for myself. I thought that if the coach saw me doing this, it would be helpful for others, that they would feel that, oh, this kid's a good guy. He should deserve to be in the lineup. While that wasn't very true, it made me feel awful after games. It made me feel really bad when guys would be would say thank you to me. When they would say, oh, thanks for doing this, Remy, or just helping me out in general. It would really feel awful for me because I would feel that I was doing something for myself, but they were grateful for it. Because of this, I changed my MO. I changed the reason that I was doing these things. I began doing it because it was the good thing to do. I enjoyed doing it because I loved my teammates. And that didn't change. I didn't I still didn't play. But what it did for me was it made it effortless. It made it easy for me. It made it much more enjoyable for me to sacrifice my time and other th efforts to help my teammates when I enjoyed doing it. Because I enjoyed doing it because it helped my team. It didn't help me, it helped the team, it helped others, which in turn made their gratitude and their payment back to me, just saying, thank you. That made it worth it because I changed my perception. The situation didn't change, but what did change was my perception of it. And I think that comes with another valuable lesson. People oftentimes have different understandings of what something is. 
it comes from say looking at something from another side another angle it's very important to do this especially in uh, fields where you're innovating because sometimes you just have such a set mindset and then you can have somebody else come along they may look at it and just say hey why don't you try doing it this way and they could be entirely right because their mind hasn't been limited or forged into thinking things have to be a certain way that is something that cannot be undervalued as well just like gratitude when you're open to trying new things you're open to more success blocking out certain things is beneficial to a degree sometimes you need to block out uh, people in your life for example sometimes they're just they're not ready for you or you're not ready for them it can go both ways but they're not gonna help you benefit there's always something that can be taken from people in lessons that can be learned in past relationships you can learn what to do better for yourself they can learn to do better but there's always something to be gained but not everything is meant to last forever there's a massive level of feeling in this current society that once somebody has something then they're set they don't need to work for it they don't need to appreciate it anymore they should be happy because of that that's a gross misconception for example in a relationship you may have a significant other and feel that oh just because I have that now I can enjoy it and appreciate it but you need to work to maintain that love need to work to maintain that every day the same thing goes with motivation motivation is not something that is just achieved it's not something that you just pick out of the air and you feel all right I'm motivated today sometimes it is like that you can be inspired but motivation is a consumable thing just like food you need to have replenishing factors for it and that's something that people don't understand they feel that oh I'm in this dead-end job what am I gonna do there's no motivation, there's no hope. That's the perception that they have. Somebody who just came into that same job, they may not have been there for as long, but they could feel this is so exciting. And it's a perception. They haven't been there as long, you've been there longer, but what you can do is you can change your perception. And if you change your perception and you still feel that this is not indicative of the person that you want to be, then you can change. You can change your job, you can change other things. There's an unlimited amount of factors that you can do to change and add things to your life. Blocking things out oftentimes isn't good. Sometimes, less often than it is, you do need to block things out. However, there are very few things in life that are set in stone, that are forever, regardless of anything else um, like the earth's gonna keep spinning for you that's probably true life is going to keep going on and the current system of nature and life that we have will continue um, the, but nothing is set sometimes emotions feel like they're set you feel you maybe you feel like this is a permanent state of emotion. You may feel you're depressed, that it's a permanent state of depression, but I'm here to tell you it's not. And you can change it. There's, a, there's nothing, there's no, there's no biological factor that is telling you you need to feel a certain way. Now, of course, there are hormones and different uh, chemical processes that cause you to feel certain ways. But mentally, you can take a look at those and you can change how you feel about each one. It's an incredible process, but if you really take a, take a look at yourself, how you feel about certain things, then you can change like your gut feeling almost on them. Seeing somebody, a very common example of this is, once again, in a relationship, you may see someone and you feel, uh, you have a crush on like you're excited you feel like butterflies in your stomach you feel great you're when you're around them and then you may break up and you feel uh, resentment for example or, or some other negative emotion around that same person just because your perspective changed that's a rather extreme example but it can happen it can go both ways 
you can have somebody who you just despise, uh, something that you just absolutely dislike. Uh, maybe it's playing a certain sport. You just hate playing lacrosse. You hate people who uh, do it and everything about it. Maybe you pick it up one day and you say, hey, this is pretty fun because of something else that you found out about it because you didn't understand it. And it's crucial to not judge things because sometimes they are great. You may just think, oh, it's going to make me feel uncomfortable. It's going to push me out of my comfort zone. When it does that, oftentimes you're not fully understanding it because you haven't tried it and B, because you're expecting it to have a predetermined outcome without ever figuring out what it really is about. That means that you have to be open to try these new things because they can provide a new feeling. They can provide something that maybe you've been lacking. It can help you improve life. And that's really, really the point of life, isn't it? To improve upon it. Nobody comes out of the womb thinking, all right, I'm here, let's make it worse. If that's really the goal, then why are, you, why are you here? It's time to take a look at what you're doing and be happy, be positive. Think, all right, what can I do differently, the same, and take action upon those things.